Hello and welcome to Brumbies TV, I'm Brittany Bloomer. This week we get an in-depth look into the club's charity DVCS and we also preview the upcoming game against the Highlanders. Tonight on Brumbies TV, the Alala Toa brothers review their first Super Rugby game playing against each other. We find out who's annoying who in the Brumbies camp, and we check out the highlights from last weekend's round of local rugby. A tough loss against the clinical Crusaders outfit, taking time out of preparations for his trip to New Zealand is Aiden Tua. Aiden, thanks for joining me. No worries, thank you. The Crusaders look quick to pounce on mistakes on the weekend. Is that how you saw it on the field? Yeah, you know, it was... Um... It was a really tough game. They were um, they were very good defensively, and you know, as you said, you know, we only made a couple of mistakes, but when we did, they really capitalised. And you know, you can't afford to do them against the top teams. Big Namani and Adalo looked um, a handful out on the wing. Yeah, he's a um, he's a big boy, and yeah, really tough to contain. I thought Joey did a really good job on him, but. You know, he's always going to have some sort of impact on the game, which he did on the weekend. And you guys have a bit of history. Oh, yeah, we, um, we grew up in Brizzy. Um, he was a couple of years older than me, went to rival schools, uh, rival rugby schools. So, you know, I've seen him come through and, you know, it's no surprise to me he is where he is. Uh, there was a sense of occasion around the day. How was it being part of an Anzac Day match? Yeah, it was, um, it was actually really great. It was my first Anzac Day match to be part of. Um, the last post at the start and, you know, the whole build up to it. Um, you know, it was really great and it's such a great occasion. It's um, awesome to pay tribute to, um, you know, all the forefathers who went before us. Um, shall, we, shall we have a look at the highlights? Yeah, sure, let's do it. At 125 kilograms, Namani Nadalo is hard to stop this close to the line. 16,000 rugby fans turned up to GIO Stadium on a special Anzac Day match. They didn't have to wait long for the Brumbies to hit back. Robbie Coleman scoring his first try of the season. The Crusaders made something out of nothing when flanker Matt Todd stole the ball from Scott Fardy on the halfway line and handed it to Johnny McAlai. Nadalo continued to prove a handful on the left wing, showing all black Israel Dag the way to the post. The score didn't seem out of reach, and despite sustained pressure, the Brumbies found a way around the Crusaders in the hands of Joe Tamani. The margin back down to 12 points. The Brumbies were made to pay for another unforced error. Cody Taylor crossing for his second try of the day. And the race is on. Brilliant pick up by Havili. And he offloaded to The Crusaders running out to a 40 points to 14 win. A tough opposition even on home soil. Is there anything you think you need to work on after the game? Um, you know, I think just our execution, you know, holding on to the ball. I thought when we did, we, um, you know, we made good ground and, you know, I think we're going to watch, watch that game again and, you know, I think it, you know, should have been a lot closer than it was. Um, so I think just our execution and, you know, that comes down to training on the paddock. So we're going to have a big week this week. On a slightly lighter note, you're known for your big step. <laughs> I'm wondering how that came about. Um, you know, it's not, it's not really something you work on. Um, you know, I'm just lucky to be small and agile and, you know, you just try your best to avoid the big guys on the other team. So, yeah, it's uh, just something that, you know, I, just happens in the game. And now you've settled into the regular position of fullback this year. How are you finding that challenge? Yeah, um, I'm really enjoying it. Uh, you know, as a back line, we haven't had too many injuries. Um, obviously, Henry's gone away with the sevens, but, you know, we've been able to, you know, play a few games together and starting to you know, get to know each other's games a bit more. And, you know, we're halfway through the season now and I think as a back line, you know, we're definitely getting better and I'm feeling a lot more settled at the back. So, you know, the second half of the season, um, you know, I expect, you know, big things from us. Looking ahead to this weekend, the Highlanders are going to be tough to beat. 
Uh, what will a win mean at this stage of the season? Yeah, you know, um, we are, what, five and three now. So, you know, wins are pretty important uh, in the context of the season. But, uh, you know, we're not looking too far ahead. The Highlanders, you know, they had a loss on the weekend against the Sharks at home. So, you know, they're going to be in the same boat as us looking to um, get their season back on track. Um, you know, they're the reigning champions. They've shipped us out to Invercargill for the, um, for the game, you know, which will be tough. But, you know, it could help us in the... Um, same sense because they haven't played them very often as well. So, you know, really tough game and, you know, we just got to get our preparation right. Aidan, thanks so much for spending some time on Brumbies TV. No worries. Thank you very much. Mum's gone around and made t-shirts, a little badge there, half Crusaders, half Brumbies with the uh, team lullets all at the back. So, <laughs> and you'll see them. They'll, they'll, they'll be a group, group, mass, massive group of them wearing it. So. Now, this is going to be interesting. Rod Capel, we've got Alan Alatara in the front row for the Brumbies in Jersey 17 and his brother Mike in the front row for the Crusaders in Jersey 18. Proud father, Billy, in the crowd. He played for Manu Samoa, along with Scott Seo's dad, David Seo. Alan Alatoa, named after Alan Border, Australian cricketer. It was different. It was different. Um, I think we are fortunate enough to both run on at the same time. So we're both fresh and... Um, I think we really gave it a crack at each other, even though we're brothers. Um, you know, we really went hard. Uh, he's, it's, it's just good to see him doing well, the Crusaders. Mike, but it's, uh, it's good to play today, mate. How do you feel out there? Yeah, it felt pretty good. Uh, the boys were, the boys were started really well, so it made the job easy for me when I came on, and just could just worry about trying to splash you. It's a good experience. Uh, really enjoyed playing against my little brother. Yeah, mate. Uh, been waiting for this game all year. I've uh, got to celebrate tonight with the family. Reds have shaken the Stormers at Newlands, but were outscored four tries to three. On the back of an impressive victory over the Highlanders, the Reds travelled to South Africa as underdogs. The Stormers had a 14 to three lead when Queensland flanker Liam Gill crossed under the posts. This try from Carmichael Hunt was the first of two in quick time after the break, as the Reds regained the lead. The Stormers clawed back the difference off the boot of replacement Brandon Thompson and scored again after full time, winning 40 points to 22. In other games on the weekend, the Highlanders suffered another one-point loss. The Rebels moved to the top of the Australian Conference after defeating the Cheetahs. Bernard Foley led the point scoring in a big win for the Waratahs over the force and the Lions smashed the Kings at Nelson Mandela Bay Stadium. On the ladder, the Chiefs remain well out in front as the Brumbies drop to number nine. The Waratahs are hanging just outside the top eight and the Sunwolves are off the bottom of the table. It's a Canberra-based setup that's been around for 28 years and essentially we provide DV domestic violence services to the entire Canberra community. Um, my role is to oversee the various arms of the organisation. There's crisis counselling, emergency accommodation, so it's quite a, a unique organisation. Um, and as I said, we've been around for 28 years um, supporting Canberrans. Um, yeah, well, obviously um, humbled for domestic violence um, crisis services to take me on as a champion and along with uh, the other champions as well and creating awareness in our community. Um, and yeah, the, the organisation do a fantastic job um, under the radar, doing um, some fantastic things for our community and the people in need. So I, I felt um, yeah, more than happy to jump on board and, and try and make a difference as well. Um, yeah, I guess um, I've mainly had involvement with the Young People's Program. Um, they have picnics and, and things like that in the school holidays with uh, uh, young um, families in that outreach program. And those are fun times when you go to spend time with the kids and um, I guess take their minds off I guess the troubles they've had and um, their struggles. So those are the, the real exciting and fun times. They, they've really got a lot of energy and they wear you out. Oh, we were pretty stoked. I mean, it was pretty, a uh, pretty unique relationship, really. I mean, to have a, a sporting club, which is a male-dominated sort of sporting arena, um, to uh, sort of, I guess, align themselves with a, with an issue, as, as Christian said, that kind of flies under the radar. Um, to have people of that club align itself with us was, was just awesome. Um, yeah, to see um, the group be brave enough to step out and. Um sort of take the charity on board as our number one um, charity and support. I think um, it was quite a unanimous decision from the group 
but uh, mainly from them just stepping out and wanting to make a difference. And we, we've spoken in the past about a group having a, such a, a rare opportunity to be able to do that. And uh, we're, we're stoked to be able to create that awareness and, um, and really speak about things and create an opportunity for people to speak about it as well. So um, the, the group's really um, been fantastic in that, um, jumping on board and the whole organisation really. Why him? Well, isn't that obvious? <laughs> I think there was just something away that, that, that he presented in terms of an interest in it. Um, to watch his engagement with the children is fantastic. There's clearly a connection that he can make pretty quickly. Um, and I think it was a, a, a cause that, you know, he personally was interested in and had, I guess, the personality and the capacity to take further into the rest of the team and be a wonderful ambassador and champion for the broader Canberra community. One of my favourite players was George Smith. Growing up, I was, a Sa I was brought up with Samoan heritage. I followed a, a lot of Islanders uh, growing up and playing in the back row. He was one of my idols and um, I was pretty uh, lucky to get to play with him in 2013. Uh, I got to room with him in South Africa before my starting debut, which was uh, a highlight of my career. It was against the Sharks. I was very nervous. I was a pretty fresh-faced, you know, young prop. Uh, I was only 20 years old. My dad told me to just, you know, stay calm, you know, and just keep staying positive, keep your morale up. And uh, it all sort of happened in a blur. Um, everyone sort of still bags me out about my first touch in Super Rugby. I dropped the ball over the line. And um, they all make jokes that we, we should have won that game. I should have scored, but, you know, it's uh, just the way the cookie crumbles sometimes. It's been great to sort of uh, take my experiences and help them with it, uh, and just help them along, you know. I think the environment is not about spoon feeding them, not giving them the right answers all the time, but letting them grow and just slowly giving them a bit of advice as they, as they go along. Because at the end of the day, it's their rugby journey and you want them to experience it, you know, as much as they can. One thing for me is knowing that my family's there in the crowd. Uh, you know, they're, they're why I'd, I do it every day, they're why I wake up and, you know, lace my boots up and, and really hit the training ground. You know, they, they sacrifice a lot for me and they're, they're my number one support crew. And that's a great feeling, it's one that I'll always cherish, you know, because you never know when your next game is your last. Um, obviously going to be tough, the, the defending champions and in pretty good form as well. So uh, we just got to be ready and prepare as best we can as we try to do every week. Um, and it's going to be a tough trip down there, I think we're in Imbacargo. Um, so it's going to be tough. I think hopefully we can stop by Queenstown, have a little, uh, nice little getaway there. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think um, the game's going to be tough. There's, um, I guess, no doubts about that. But we're, we'll just try and prepare and play as well as we can to get the result. Um, I think we've had some stuff in the past. We've uh, obviously did the 20 for 20, um, donated 20,000 when we got 20,000 people at the game against the Waratahs in round two, mm -hmm. I think that was. Um, and then they had the ball where we sent a few players there to um, help um, organise and fundraise with the, the crew out there, the, yep, the hard-working crew there and obviously the education, um, they, they're providing services of educating the staff, players, even down to our under-20s um, mm. group and then our young people's program, getting involved in that is mm. something that we're real passionate about, I guess mm. working and connecting with kids. I guess accessing our service is probably probably one of the easiest things that people can do. They just need to remember a phone number, which is 62 800 900, and that's available 24-7, seven days a week. So that's really sort of very easy and not to feel as though whatever that you were, you know, struggling with, that you can't make that call and that we're happy to, to chat with someone with wherever they're at. Well, there's lots of things they can do. I mean, for a, start, a good place to start would be to get on and have a look at our website and see, the, I guess, the range of services and programs that, that we offer, whether there's some volunteering capacity that they might have in terms of supporting the service. There's always sort of fundraising, but there's also that broader just having the conversation around domestic violence amongst their, you know, sort of friends and families and keeping it an issue that's, you know, sort of, I guess, alive and not working in the shadows in the way that it has been in the past. It's great to get it out there as, as an issue that really does affect our community. Let's take a look at how the teams match up before the game at Invercargill. 19 games have been played and the Brumbies have the upper hand. They last met the day before Anzac Day in 2015 at GIO Stadium, where the Brumbies had a convincing win. Siua Halano Konakua is a relative unknown for the Brumbies, the Tongan joining the Highlanders from the ITM Cup this year. 
Keep an eye out for how Scott Seo handles the Super Rugby newbie. In other games this weekend, the Chiefs host the Sharks and the Force have another home game. The Rebels are in New Zealand as well, taking on the Blues and the Reds are back in Brisbane. On Sunday, the Hurricanes have a big task on their hands against the Lions and the Waratahs have their first game in South Africa. <laughs> I wouldn't say annoying, but he, 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 he talks a lot, um, you know, uh, our friend Ida. Andrew Smith's actually really annoying. I think he's, um, he's taking the crown as, as the most annoying teammate. Probably Tom Staniforth. Uh, just, you got to get him on a good day. That's an easy one. Most annoying person in the squad, Ida Vea. Tends to um, talk a lot and a lot about himself as well. But I'm going to have to say that uh, Joey Powell. Yeah? Joey Powell, yeah. Why? Mate, I just feel like slapping him every time I see him. Like, <laughs> for some reason, I just, I don't know what it is about him. I tell him it's his face, but I don't know what it is. Probably Ben Alexander, I think I'll blame him for everything. <laughs> yeah, Alan Alatawa? Yeah, for sure. Why is that? Oh, just over at lunch, he seems to like eat all the food, like, you know, doesn't think about anyone else. Just... Actually, scratched Joey Powell, Tommy Staniforth, most annoying. Uh, Alan Alatawa. Uh, he just uh, talks a lot of... Uh, <laughs> it took a lot, and uh, it's just hard to shut him up. Uh, it's choose your ears, choose your ear. Alan Altar. What was that? Um, just always loud and um, tries to pick on me. James Dargaville. I think he just looks terrible all the time, and you know he's got so much potential, but he dresses so poorly, and you know, he's, you know, he's just that's the most annoying thing about him. He's got potential, but he looks he looks crap. Both teams started aggressively at the breakdown, but the first points came off the boot. Uni North's Sam Irwin helped his side to an early lead over the Tuggeranong Vikings at ANU North Oval. They didn't hold the lead for long before Tuggeranong's backline fired. Jake Knight linking up with Ernest Sulvai in the first of several long-range tries. Sulvai, Sulvai, all he had to do was put the palm on the shoulder because he had the pace. Vikings played 10 minutes without prop Sione Taula after a high tackle at the breakdown had the referee reaching for his pocket. Uni Norse briefly regained the lead off the back of the penalty, but it would be the last time for the afternoon. Tuggeranong's Isaac Thompson found space between two forwards to link with Knight, who would score the first of his two tries for the afternoon. The gate was open. He has Jake Knight now. Jake Knight has plenty of room. He steps back onto the inside and goes back to the outside. He may just skip At the break, the visitors had a 13-point lead and the points continued to flow in the second half. Suavai and Knight linking up again for the third try in the second half. On the outside, it's Jake Knight, and he's one of the fastest on the field. They'll do well to catch Jake Knight. He goes in for another try here. Tuggeranong continued to dominate at the breakdown and had a healthy lead when scrum half Joe Powell was shown a yellow card late in the game. The Owls didn't give up though. Skipper Dave Bennett crossing a chalk in the dying minutes. The final score 52 points to 13.